Thank you very much and good morning everyone or good afternoon depending on where you are connecting from. Uh, yeah, my name is Adrian Gonzalez. I'm a, a data and AI specialist at Microsoft. I have different activities um, and uh, most of them related to artificial intelligence. In this case, we have chosen this topic because, well, it's like a like a interesting topic, rag scenarios, but uh, specific to databases. Why we are doing this? Well, the origin of this, um, I have a deep learning.ai class, which is a free class uh, with Android G with the team of deep learning.ai. And um, the idea was to explore how we can connect to remote databases, relational databases in this case, and leverage natural language to, you know, like analyze the information. Uh, the context, uh, Obviously on the market, there are like solutions that are doing this, but the idea was to, to create code that will allow you to connect to whatever kind of database you want. Um, so what I'll explain here, because we have like a, this is a short session, uh, I'll focus mostly on the, on the learnings and the approach and I'll share some code with you. You will have access also to the notebooks later if you want them. Uh, because you can leverage them, you can change the kind of model you will be using, you can change the, the libraries, for example, at some moment we are using Langchain in our libraries, you can experiment with that. But the idea here is that you understand the purpose of how we interact with the uh, structured data relational databases. Um, so let me just uh, adapt my screen so I can see the full screen here. I'll just uh, share a few slides as a context so you get the, the point, and after that, I'll go to the code. Um, here, obviously, most of you know already this, like AI agents, like this ability to perform different tasks. It could be multi-agent for different, different tasks at the same time uh, by leveraging LLMs and leveraging different LLM frameworks nowadays. And database agent is that uh, that notion no, of a system that is connecting the models to a database and then we are putting something, I will define what something means here, but something in the middle that allows you to uh, send an instruction, natural language and transform it into a query and then that query is returning information. And uh, that it could even like try several times to get the good results and realize if the, something is not uh, good from the results of the query and then retry, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, we're following the retrieval augmented generation pattern, as you know, like uh, connecting to, to an existing knowledge base rather than fine tuning a model. Um, so just uh, if we approach it like uh, from, the, from the general to the specific, if we wanted to, to you know, like uh, connect to a database and uh, analyze this kind of data, uh, we'll have different ways to do that. There are companies that are focusing on fine tuning the models, like uh, educating the model to perform better with SQL kind of task, scale AI, other companies, they have been releasing like results on that approach. And uh, then you can use like the, the, the frameworks we mentioned. If you are aware of frameworks, Langchain, Semantic Kernel, Crew, et cetera, et cetera. Well, in this case, uh, I'm using Langchain agents to connect not only to SQL databases, but it could be just the CSV file, right? With the dump of the, of the data. Um, technically, if we have a database with a native API, we can leverage the API. And from the LLM, we could call to the API and retrieve that information and then rebuild the answer based on the information and API. That will be for managed kind of databases like Cosmos DB, et cetera. Um, then if, if you want to evolve the approach or to change the approach and you want to rely maybe on frameworks and you just prefer to go with the native functionalities of the AI models, uh, you can leverage uh, function calling, you can leverage assistance API. And, and by the way, here I'm just saying Azure OpenAI because this is the technology I know the most because I'm working at Microsoft, but uh, this is totally agnostic. What I want you is to get the, the framework the general framework, and then you can experiment with whatever model you want. So on the, on the scope of this uh, session, we'll focus on these three. The RAC directly to the data, and the data can be CSV or, or SQL, and we'll be using the Langchain agents. Uh, then function calling, then assistance, interpreter, et cetera. 
the kind of architecture, because I'm very visual, I usually use like architecture. This is a simplified one. But basically what we're saying is, okay, we have the interface. In this case, the interface will be just the notebook. We don't have like a specific uh, stream lead or, or whatever uh, um, um, user interface. It's just the notebook. And then we'll be relying on uh, existing endpoints. And that's why I'll be sharing the, the deep learning.ai class with you because the endpoints and the APIs are already available there. You don't need to put your own APIs. Uh, so that's for free. And uh, and then we have the right mechanism, depending on the different levels we have seen like uh, uh, one minute ago. And for the SQL database, it will be like a local SQL database, SQLite database actually, and we'll be connecting and we'll be performing the, the actions, okay? Uh, so for that class, as I mentioned, like uh, you will be playing with these pieces, but uh, you use the 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 deep learning.ai sandbox. You have already everything pre-installed. If you rely on the uh, Google Colab uh, notebooks, I'll be sharing with you. In that case, you need just to you know configure your APIs, and it could be Azure OpenAI, it could be OpenAI directly. It doesn't matter. We are mostly working with GPT-4 kind of models because uh, less than that, like a three or five um, or other less performant models could struggle to perform this kind of actions because they are on the edge of the, of the complexity. Um, on the material of the class, you have these uh, notebooks. These are all yours. You can use it. I have removed my endpoints. So you don't consume my my API, but uh, you can just download it. You can just copy the code. You can adapt it. And now I just want you to continue evolving this because there are so many other things we could do. But this is the sequence of the lessons. The first one is just uh, building like an AI agent, which is basically just leveraging the the, the LLM, the the API. Then interacting with the CSV data we mentioned because that's the the most fundamental way to connect to to the data. Then similar approach, but directly to a SQL database with the flavor I mentioned before. And then we're evolving and we are going to this kind of function calling and assistance API uh, to connect to, to the SQL databases. I'll be sharing all these links with you by the end of the session. Um, this is the, the class you want. Uh, you can use it as your own uh, sandbox. As I mentioned, you have all the, all the resources there. Uh, you check building your own database agent, you can just join that later. And again, the purpose of this session today is not to replicate what I have done there, because for that you can just join the class. Here is just to focus on the on the key learning. Okay. So let me go maybe um, here and share the screen. These are the, the notebooks that you can access with the links I'll I'll be sharing with you, so don't worry, you'll get access to all of these. As I mentioned, you need to replace your endpoint and your uh, API key, but I'll, I'll explain the details later. If we go to, to the class, shall we, I'm not, sorry, I'm not showing off that this is the interaction with Andrew, but uh, that was pretty cool. But if we uh, go directly to the, to the first lesson, you'll see a, a little bit the shape of the, of the notebook, which is just a, a Jupyter notebook kind of thing. Um, this first lesson, as I mentioned, will be just connecting to API. So this will be pretty basic for most of you. If you have never used an Azure OpenAI or OpenAI API, this is useful, right? Um, you will have uh, all the instructions so you can check the, the details later. But basically what we are saying here is, okay, we need to connect to an Azure OpenAI endpoint. Uh, have the, the endpoint and the key, so you can just create your own deployment. Usually this kind of thing, you can do it in a programmatic way, or you can go to, in this case, because it's Azure Microsoft, you can go to a portal and you can deploy your, your resource. On that deployment, you'll be checking like the version of the model. You know that there are different versions that are changing and getting deprecated uh, all the time. The, the kind of uh, model that you want, in this case, it was just GPT-4, Something within just a mini or or four O, and uh, you have a specific name of your endpoint. These kind of things are already in the documentation, so I won't focus on that. And here, what you you will see is that we are starting just with the endpoint, 
and we are starting with the kind of uh, AI agent from the Langchain framework. So basically, we are putting that information here. We are creating like the the Langchain object, which is related to the Azure Chat OpenAI because that's the, the kind of object for for this kind of model. You have the equivalent on OpenAI, okay? And you have the equivalent on other kind of models. And and then here, I won't even run the query because it's pretty simple. Here, what we are saying is, okay, prepare your prompt. You prepare a prompt that is saying like translate this sentence from English to French and Spanish, and you say, hey, I like red cars and blue houses, uh, but my dog is yellow, like a totally random kind of thing. Actually, we can run it because it won't take like a, like a lot of time. Let me check. <clears throat> Just need to restart it. You see, so basically with this is in the basic interaction with the API and saying like, okay, the because I'm asking to translate them to French or, or Spanish, the answer, the AI message, the content will be French, GM Levatur, blah, 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 blah. And in Spanish, me gustan los coches rojos, right? Because it's translating what we have done here. But up to now, we haven't leveraged any kind of identic kind of functionality, just the basic, uh, the basic object here. If we go to the second one, and I'm trying just to, to move so, so we can go into the details and you have the visual later and I can share some, some learnings I got while developing this, this content. Um, the second one will be the CSV data. The second and third one, the good point is that the line chain is making things easy. Basically saying, hey, I have an object and I want to use uh, Azure OpenAI in this case and I want to connect to CSV, I have a frame, whatever. Um, that's pretty simple because of the framework. So here, um, what I did, what we did, because this is not uh, mine, that was so all the colleagues from Microsoft, they were using the COVID tracking data, which is basically the statistics of uh, the pandemic in the United States. And it was information, open data, <clears throat> accessible, uh, without a login password kind of thing. And it's the uh, statistics by date and state in the United States. Okay, So it was like pretty visual. In, in case you wanted to experiment, it was easy to connect, et cetera, et cetera. Instead of connecting directly to the to the API, we could have done that. We say, okay, let's uh, download the CSV, let's download the CSV, and the CSV will be in the local folder, data, all the states, history, CSV. And and then this is the part I was mentioning, no? like uh, we have line chain and we are saying like, we will create like a, a data frame with all the information we have downloaded from the CSV. And then the idea is to create a, um, a prefix and a suffix that will guide the model because we'll send a, 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 um, a query, right? The query here in this case is the question, which is how many patients were hospitalized during July 2020, et cetera, et cetera. But the idea here is that we need to start giving some um, instructions to guide the model to, to, to receive the good information. So you see here, like, um, like uh, there are some instructions on the format, there are some instructions on the kind of uh, answer and the format and the answer that we'll be getting. And then basically what we are doing is to use the agent invoke and the agent invoke will put together the prefix, the suffix and the question. If I run this uh, very quickly, I'll pass it very quickly because then we'll go to the SQL database. Basically what you'll see is that we can ask these questions to the, to the CSV data. Um, if you follow like the step by step, you'll see the traces. You can see that indeed they are like a, you know, like a 20k rows in the data frame, which is that uh, indeed you have data. And here you'll see the the logic of the agent executor uh, of a uh, chain. Uh, keep in mind that all these libraries, let's say, like they are evolving all the time, and some of the, of the functions can get deprecated. But the idea behind it is still the same is, hey, I'm observing that they have data with the date, with the state, the statistics, whatever topic, right? And um, it's like giving the data model to the, uh, the data model, like uh, the data dictionary, let's say, to the to the AI model, understanding what's here, and then understanding the logic, is developing a logic to see, hey, if you're asking me for a statistic in a specific location, uh, or for all the states, and it's about people who were hospitalized, for example, then it's connecting the dots between the, the names, for example, the columns, 
and the and the and the query just to go and say, hey, I'll generate a query there. And uh, and in this case, you are retrieving like a, for whatever in this example for Texas or or nation, nationwide, we have like three uh, sixty three k uh, cases. Okay, you can check it later, but this is the 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 basic interaction, no? the first one, and you have here the output and the explanation of how this is generating information. In terms of code, just a few lines, super simple, which prove that we can, thanks to this kind of frameworks, we can generate uh, a query very easily and we can read the data. If we go to the second one, and this one will be very parallel to what we have uh, done, but you'll see on the on the code, there are some details that change because instead of just focusing on that, CSV uh, file and the data frame, what we are doing is to put the information, the same information, we are loading into a SQL uh, kind of object, object, like a local database, I mean. So same process here, we are recovering the data set, all these setup, forget it, is just uh, related to the, to the agents and all the things we need to import. And here, what we are doing is to get the uh, information of the CSV file and to put it into a SQLite kind of database, uh, open source kind of local database. You have already, otherwise I can share it with you later, but uh, on the system you have already this test DB, which is basically the, the structure file of your SQL database. So you have that object already there. And uh, here we are putting that information there and then we are preparing the prompt and see that the, the, the instructions, and that's, uh, I got inspiration from another existing repository from Microsoft colleagues, uh, is explaining like the kind of uh, um, instruction you need to interact in a most efficient way with SQL. We are talking about the kind of operations. You are talking about what you don't want the system to do. So we, you are trying to reduce the scope of the potential actions because of course, a uh, generative AI model will just do a lot of things if we don't give the, the kind of uh, of uh, guidance for this. Um, you see that the format of the of the of the of the interaction will be like a question, the thought, the action, observation, thought, final answer. This is like uh, asking for results from the SQL database, but also providing like some chain of thought, like the, like providing the, the 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 thought process of the model, so we can interpret the 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 results. And um, here, this is the part I mentioned is very similar to what you have seen before. In this case, we are creating with the uh, Langchain uh, framework, we are creating like an agent for SQL. So it's a different kind of object, but similar. We are passing the instructions and then we are invoking with the invoke uh, uh, function, same as before. We are passing the question and you know, like uh, that's how it works. Um, again, I don't feel like the value of this uh, discussion we are having today relies on the details on how to do this. This is pretty uh, simple. You can see it on the documentation from Langchain and Azure OpenAI, this kind of thing, you can check them later. But see that uh, here in this case, we are connecting to a database and uh, that database is the local database and we have the information there. Okay, so we have done the, the very basic exercise. We have done the First interaction with the AI agent, we have connected to a CSV data, very simple way, like it's pretty, pretty simple to do this. Then the SQL uh, database, and now we'll try to evolve the approach. Why would we like to evolve the approach? And this is the, the reasoning that I want you to get also. Imagine you are going to a production level kind of system and uh, you say, hey, I want to make sure that the full creativity of a generative AI model get reduced and maybe I can define even the way we are calling to information depending on the topic. If I say, hey, I want a statistic by state, I'll create a specific function. And then the LLM will call to that function. If I'm saying, hey, I want something related to another topic, I create another function. And you try to define the most likely scenarios of the queries to guide the model in a more prescriptive way. So this is what the next part with the function calling feature is about. Um, a lot of the, the information I'll show you here. The, I think like that from all the 
notebooks, I think this, this one is the most interesting if you're trying to explore this kind of complexity of how we can connect to a, to a database. Why? Because there are things that in the day-to-day -day we don't use, right? So we are trying to to connect to a model and interact with the knowledge base and the staff. Sometimes we don't use the, the function calling. In this case, yes. And let me show you the example to illustrate what I'm saying. Here's the same. We have still the, the endpoint, the API K, whatever. Then we define, imagine, we define a function to get weather. This is a different topic. This is not about the COVID statistics. This is about the weather. And we say, hey, if we are talking about um, current weather, uh, I'll expect a location. Obviously, we say current weather where, and we'll have the Fahrenheit units, and uh, then we have some instructions, and um, and you know, like uh, we'll get the information based on some on some conditions that we have put here. So we are creating that kind of thing, and this is like a static kind of uh, function. Okay, so you understand first uh, the logic. So we have the function, and then uh, we say, hey, because we are passing uh, a query to the LLM and we are saying, hey, what's the weather in San Francisco, New York, and Las Vegas? And and, and then you say, okay, I have a, a query. I have existing functions and I want to teach uh, the model what the available tools are to reach that function. So not because you have defined the function because it is just a function in Python. This is not enough. You need to connect the function that you're creating to uh, to the to the kind of query that you are reciting. So in this case, you are saying, okay, based on the functions, I have these tools, and these tools are related to a function that is about you get the current weather, and with all the descriptions and the parameters that we are expecting, and the potential values that we could get, and so on and so forth. And then you have like uh, the required uh, kind of uh, parameter, which is location, which is exactly what you had here before. Um, in this case, you will be calling, you will be getting like a query. What uh, happened here is that you will get a query. If we detect on the query that was talking about the weather, this will launch uh, the function and we'll get the result based on that function. So you see it here. Um, uh, here we are just using the function calling. This is the, the basic structure on how to use the function calling. And then we are sending the, the the request, and then we are getting the response. Again, this is an illustrative sample, nothing related to the to the to the sorry to the uh, data data set we were to, uh, talking about. Now, imagine we are coming back to the to the SQL database. On this case, we are saying, okay, we have the information of the SQL database with all the statistics. Then we have two functions. One is for hospitalized cases. Remember, this is about pandemic. Uh, the other one is about get, uh, like uh, getting the, the positive cases. He uh, related to a specific state in the United States and a specific date. I can tell you now that it's uh, a month by month. Okay, and you are defining okay the kind of uh, query that you want to send as a SQL query. So basically, you are targeting the information in a more precise way. You are saying, hey, you are talking about this topic. Enter this condition, and please send a query that will be limited to these parameters. That's good because you'll get the information you get and you want, you will set the scope and you'll make sure that that's the, the good information. But it still keeps the creativity no, of, this, uh, of these uh, LLMs. Um, so this is an example and I won't launch because it will take time just to launch the, the kernel, but uh, this is an example and we are saying, like, I think this is Arkansas and this is for, for Mark. And you will find the information. Same kind of logic, you will get the result. Um, this is the second one. Uh, you are getting, like, uh, how many people hospitalized in Alaska? Yeah, in Arkansas, Alaska. And you are saying, hey, these are the tools. Same logic than before. So this is about the function calling. And then what you will see by the end is that you are getting just the information in a similar way compared to before that we were using Langchain. In this case, we are just setting more of a static uh, kind of function that has helped in recovering the data. And now, uh, let me check. I, I wasn't checking the, the chat. Uh, let me check if there is something here. Or I'll just go with the last part. Sorry, I couldn't see the, if there are questions. Um, 
if we go here, this is the, the most advanced, let's say, like exploring new functionalities. No, in this case, we will be using assistance API. Um, as you know, if you don't know it, like um, in general, the kind of APIs you can get uh, with these models is completion, which is a single kind of interaction, like question answer, but nothing like a, with memory, nothing like a chat. Then you get chat completion, which is like a, the kind of model behind a chat GPT and stuff that is keeping some context on the discussion. Uh, but the, the assistance API is uh, stateful, which means that it's keeping the full context of the discussion, keeping the, the kind of memory, it's not the memory, but the kind of state on the discussion, and it's creating a thread on the, on the discussion. So assistance API is another functionality that you can get. In this case, for the same purpose, you can use it like uh, to answer to the, uh, to the questions about the data set uh, with the same uh, endpoints, et cetera, et cetera. Here, what you are saying is, okay, I have the available functions that we have created before. I have this information and I can keep that context over time because what I'm creating with assistance is a thread of messages related to a specific discussion. By the end of the day, uh, you'll get the same kind of uh, results, um, the same kind of logic, but you'll be exploring that kind of uh, assistance API. And, um, yeah, no, I think like the code interpreter is an extra power, but I think like uh, we have one minute. So I kind of prefer to see if there is anything that we want to discuss or if we are good. We have two questions in the live ODAC chat. Yeah. Should I go there? Yes, if you if you want to answer some questions. Oh yeah, perfect. Uh, Okay, so the class is there. Yeah. Uh, how to connect database to uh, machine learning model plus MySQL database? Well, it is the same kind of logic. In this case, we chose the SQLite because it's just a, something that you can deploy locally. But if you have a MySQL, and given that this is the same kind of language that we are talking about relational databases, you can have that object, that remote database. And that's why with the, the, um, the notebooks that I'm sharing with you, you can just replace that object and you can make sure you launch the query and using the query to uh, connect it to that uh, MySQL database. It could be MySQL, it could be Postgre, it could be different, different flavors. Um, then how difficult or easy is to set up role level security when using an LLM database to ensure no cross information is spread? That's a very good question. And I, I'm not sure I have the full answer here. Uh, in general, my day to day, I work mostly at document level kind of security. So for example, you are doing RAG and you are, um, and you are like uh, trying to connect to a, to the information in some storage and you have like a, the rights for, for the different documents, uh, I can filter with that based on the active directory kind of configurations. If not here, but you could give some instructions and to say to skip some information. Imagine you have like different columns. You have one column about the information you want, the numerical column, and then you have one column with the identity or the ID card of the person. You could, with the function calling, avoid any kind of information going, going back uh, with sensitive information. Uh, you could define the query that you want and the kind of information you want to have. So that's a way to filter and to, to guide the scope. Um, I cannot, uh, okay, I cannot access the share Google doc, the share Google doc. I understand that is the Google collapse or, or maybe the, the, the slide. Let me check. We'll check it later. We have a discussion here on the chat. Uh, I'll make sure you, you access all the information. Um, there are some scenarios where we have a coordinated origin that distributes tasks between other agents and collect the output from different agents to summarize the results. There are also routers. Do you have examples of use cases for such scenarios? Yes, yes. Uh, that's the kind of, uh, if I'm getting the, the, the question right, the kind of multi-agent kind of scenarios. I think that here we are, uh, and this implementation, we're talking about a mono agent, let's say like one single scenario with one specific skill. Uh, but if you want like something that will be doing different stuff, imagine one agent doing SQL, one agent summarizing documents from data lake, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you want it to connect dynamically based on the kind of query. Then you have that intermediary kind of implementation. Now companies like, uh, yeah, for multi-agent like True AI, for example, 
they are focusing on that kind of uh, opportunity because there is a lot of demand. That is one of the the hot topics right now, like the multi agent. But the, by the end of the day, is the same kind of logic. It's a framework in the middle, a series of pieces of code that are helping uh, root, like a router that you mentioned, root the, the queries and then distributing the tasks depending on the skills of the different of the different agents. Um, so yeah, um, we'll make sure you get access to everything. I'll just take a look uh, later at this, uh, the live uh, ODSC chat. I'll be sharing all the information. And uh, remember, you can reuse the code, you can evolve it, you can do new stuff. If you do that, uh, please share on LinkedIn and let me know how that goes. But uh, yeah, I hope this uh, demystify a little bit uh, the ability to connect to databases.